joining me today. I'm just going to switch out our screen. All right, so I have good stories today about cooking and food and sharing food because that is always so nice. And then we're going to make Play-Doh today. So we have a recipe and um, we're going to make pretty colors of Play-Doh that you can play with later and maybe pretend that you're making your own little cookies or treats. So my first story is called Dozens of Donuts. It's by Carrie Finnison and Brianne Farley drew the pictures. And this was the one that, um, I think this was a new one for the library. Yes, it was. And I went, oh, we have to read that one. That just looks so fun. I mean, ooh, look at all these lovely, yummy, colorful donuts. Oh, who likes donuts? You guys like donuts? Mm, well, here we go with Dozens of Donuts by Carrie Finnison. Oh, there's our bear doing a little baking. And Brianne Farley did the picture. So here he is. It's a lovely, a lovely morning and he's baking. It was early one morning as autumn leaves scatter. Luann's busy stirring a big bowl of batter. She'll eat some sweet treats, then warm and well fed, she'll sleep away winter all tucked in her bed. It's a nice thing to eat before you go to sleep for the winter. One dozen donuts, hot from the pan, toasty and tasty, and all for ding dong. Hmm. She opens the door and there's her friend Woodrow. And Woodrow asks, do you have enough for a neighbor to share? Sure, says Luann, and she pulls up a chair. Mmm, one dozen donuts, hot from the pan, half are for Woodrow, the rest are for Ding dong. Uh-oh, there goes the door again. I think you might know that one dozen donuts is 12. And so right now they have six on each plate. Whoops. Six on each plate. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So six and six. But the doorbell rang. So let's see who's at the door. Clyde? Luann, feeling generous, offers her plateful. Donuts? My favorite, says Clyde. I'm so grateful. You're welcome. Dig in. I'll make more, says Luann. So she measures and mixes as fast as she can. One dozen donuts, hot from the pan, a few for her friends and the rest for ding dong. Uh-oh, not again. Poor Luann, is she ever going to eat a donut? And now it's Topsy. I smelled something good. Can I hang for a while? Luann says, come in. But she's lost her big smile. Delicious, cries Topsy, and gulps down a swallow. Luann's heart feels warm, but her belly feels hollow. She's hungry, and all of her friends are getting to eat her donuts, and all she's getting to do is make them, right? Well, finally, one dozen donuts, hot from the pan, some for each friend and the rest for hmm, ding dong. Just as so she's about to take a bite, not again. And now, Mouffette? Mouffette is so shy that she hides in a shrub. Luann heaves a sigh and says, oh, come join the club. 
While her guests eat the donuts, Luann starts to worry. She cracks her last egg and pours milk in a hurry. Uh-oh. The last dozen donuts are hot from the pan. A pair for each friend means there's more for ding dong. Oh, oh champ and chop. Oh, it sounds like a party and they both scamper in. They fill up their cheeks. Now let winter begin. Woodrow pours cider and they all raise a toast, but Luann is fed up with her job as the host. So she gets to do all the cooking and serving, but none of the eating. She's ready to sleep through the snow, ice, and sleet, but winter is near and there's nothing to eat. Down in her throat, there's a low, hungry grumble. It slowly grows louder, and her friends hear the rumble. One look at Luann, and they dash for the door. After all, she's a bear, and she's ready to roar. Oh, she looks angry now, doesn't she? I think she's hangry, hungry and angry at the same time. She fusses and flails and then slowly grows still and the snowflakes drift down. All is quiet until, oh, not again, ding dong. Now who could that be? Peeking outside, Luann blinks in surprise. Her friends have come back and they've all brought supplies. We counted the donuts you made us so many and that's when we noticed you didn't get any. Aww. And it says, we're sorry, Luann. Foxy ties aprons, they prop Luann's feet, chip measures, chop mixes, and Mouffette checks the heat. Dozens of donuts, hot from the pan, stacked up in heaps, and they're all for Luann. Hooray! But her friends have made more than enough for one bear. She has plenty to eat and she's happy to share. And that is the end of our story. So I hope you guys like that one. I just thought that was so cute and so sweet to she make all the poor Luann. She made all those donuts and people kept coming to her door to eat them but they didn't forget in the end. So we have lots of good stories like this at the library with about people showing up in time for meals and, and all the food being eaten. But in the end, I think everybody always helps each other. So I have a good little uh, rhyme that we can do. I think we've done this one. So the song we're gonna sing is called One Little, Two Little, Three Little Cookies. So it's a little counting cookie song and we're going to count the cookies and first we're going to say they're on my plate so the, the cookies will be on our plate and then they're going to be in our belly so here we go let's count them first so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and you know what since our song was about don't our story was about donuts why don't we say we'll call these donuts we'll pretend these are donuts with sprinkles so here we go one little two little three little donuts four little five little six little donuts seven little eight little nine little donuts 10 little donuts on my plate. And now we're gonna eat them. We're gonna put them in our belly. So 
One little, two little, three little donuts. Four little, five little, six little donuts. Seven little, eight little, nine little donuts. Ten little donuts in my belly. Okay, so that was fun. And that I have a good story about counting, about numbers and cooking and counting. And this is called Pigs Love Potatoes. So do you guys like to eat potatoes? This is Pigs Love Potatoes. And this one is, this is an old story for the library, but old stories are always good too. And this is like another, this is a counting story and it takes place at the piggy's house. And it's a family who all wants to eat the potatoes. And this is by Anika Denise and Christopher Denise drew the pictures. So here they are playing at home. And here's our mommy with her big colander of potatoes. One pig wants potatoes, so mama starts to cook. Then one pig's little brother decides to come and look. Now, two pigs want potatoes and soon begin to yelp. So mama scolds her two pigs and tells them they must help. Now, two pigs wash potatoes while mama gets a pan. When two pigs little sister sings, catch me if you can. Uh-oh, I think they're gonna lose interest in cooking. But now, three pigs peel potatoes and mama gets a spoon to stir the three potatoes that will be boiling soon. Mm. Just then, the papa piggy comes through the big brown door. He sits down at the table making three pigs into four. Now, four pigs peel potatoes and four pigs sit and wait when four pigs next door neighbor comes strolling through the gate. Now, five pigs want potatoes and mama makes it six that's quite a few potatoes that mama has to fix. Then three more little piggies show up just in time and mama adds potatoes seven, eight, and nine. Now, nine potatoes for nine piggies says mama with a grin and one more for good measure splash in goes number 10. let's see if we can count those one two three four five six seven eight nine and there's the last potato ten well since pigs love potatoes to mama's great delight the very piggy piggies eat each and every bite. But it's not over yet. The only thing that mama tells her piggies they must do is kiss her cheek and clear their plates when piggies are all through. And that's the end. So maybe that's something you guys do after you eat your dinner. You give your mommy or daddy or grandma a kiss and say thank you. And you help to clean up by taking your plate over to the sink and helping to clear the table. That's a nice way to help after you enjoy a good meal. So speaking of good meals, I have a good song to sing about making peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. So uh, 
maybe you guys might know this one. It's an old one too. So hopefully I'll get it right. So we're gonna go, we're gonna go like this. We're gonna go peanut, peanut butter. And what goes on a peanut butter sandwich? Jelly and jelly. Peanut, peanut butter and jelly and jelly. First you have to take the peanuts and you dig them, you dig them. Peanut, peanut butter, and jelly, and jelly. Peanut, peanut butter, and jelly, and jelly. Then you take the peanuts and you smash them. You smash them. Peanut, peanut butter, and jelly, and jelly. Peanut, peanut butter, and jelly, and jelly. Then you take the grapes and you crush them. You crush them. Peanut, peanut butter, and jelly, and jelly. Peanut, peanut butter, and jelly, and jelly. Then you take the bread and you spread it. You spread it. Peanut, peanut butter, and jelly, and jelly. Peanut, peanut butter, and jelly, and jelly. Then you take the sandwich and you eat it. Nom, 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 nom. You eat it. Nom, 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 nom. Peanut, peanut butter, and jelly, and jelly. Peanut, peanut butter, and jelly, and jelly. And that's how you make a peanut butter sandwich and eat it and enjoy it. And then you can't talk, right? It's really hard to talk with peanut butter and jelly sandwich in your mouth. <laughs> okay, well, so we have one more little story for you guys, and then we'll make our we'll make our play-doh or our donuts, whatever you want them to be. And this is called Hot Pot Night. And this is another new one for the library. This is by Vincent Chen. And he wrote the story and drew the pictures. And hot pot is a type of food that you, it's a big mixing bowl full of food that you have with friends and you share. You share it and, and you put everything together and, and you, you, you um, have a big sharing feast together. So this is called hot pot night and i think i forget if this is in korean if this is a korean meal i forget oh it says hot pot is a chinese soup okay so here we go with hot pot night by vincent chen what's for dinner mm. let's have hot pot Yay, looks like everybody's excited. I have the pot. You have the broth. She brought the meat. He grew the greens. Hot pot, hot pot, let's have hot pot. So look, they have all their food all, all around the table. Everybody brings something special. Sploosh goes the meat, splash go the greens. What's a good, what a good smell. What a long wait. Hot pot, hot pot, it's time for hot pot. Mmm. Please pass the sauce. Save some meat for me. There they are all around the table eating out of the same pot with all the different ingredients. Whoops, if we go this way. This, these stories always confuse me. I want some more. There's more for all. So they're using their chopsticks to dip it into the big pot. Hot pot, hot pot, tasty hot pot. No more cabbage, no more tofu, no more hot pot. What 
to do. This time, your pot. Next time, my pot. Hot pot hits the right spot. And that's the end. <laughs> and here in the back of the book, if you want to borrow this one, is a little recipe for how to make hot pot. So maybe what I'll do is I'll put that up on our website. If you want to try to make this recipe, it might be fun to do. And it says hot pot is a Chinese soup that literally brings people together and encourages them to share. Diners gather around a hot pot at the dining table and add ingredients to the boiling broth. Sometimes you use meat, vegetables, tofu, noodles, mushrooms, fish balls, and more. And there's many types of hot pot recipes in Asia, all across Asia. So this is a thing to eat. So maybe you've done something like this at home too. So I guess that's all for our stories for today. Um, I do have one cute one. I don't want to read too many. This is really short. It's called Please, Mr. Panda. And it's actually a nice little story about donuts and sharing. So maybe I will read this one quick. Do you guys want a quick story? One more quick one before we go make our Play-Doh? I can't see you, so hopefully you're giving me a thumbs up. There's lots of donuts on this one. And this is by Steve Antony. It's just a cute, I, there's a lot of stories in this series by this author. So here's our, here's our panda bear with his box of donuts. Would you like a donut? Give me the pink one. Maybe you can figure out, there's a little problem in this story. Maybe you can figure out by the end what the problem is. No, you cannot have a donut. I've changed my mind. Would you like a donut? I want the blue one and the yellow one, says the skunk. No, you cannot have a donut. I have changed my mind. Would you like a donut? And the flamingo says, no, go away. Or is that an ostrich? Maybe an ostrich. Would you like a donut? I want them all. Then bring me some more. No, you cannot have a donut. I have changed my mind. Would anyone else like a donut? He keeps offering donuts, but then he doesn't give them, does he? I wonder why. Can you think why? Hmm. Uh-oh. What's going on here? He's upside down. Or is he? Hello. May I have a donut? It's a lemur. A ring-tailed lemur. Please, Mr. Panda. Did he say the magic word? You can have them all. Oh, thank you very much. You're welcome. I don't like donuts. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. So the Mr. Panda was giving away the donuts because he didn't like them, but he wasn't giving them away if the animals didn't remember their manners. It's always right to say, please and thank you. And I think you guys definitely know that. So, all right, well, shall we make our Play-Doh? I did, I did so you know, this uh, recipe is on the website and there's even, yeah, the recipe's on the website with the instructions, so. But we'll do it together, and then you'll have some Play-Doh that you can play with if you're just going to maybe make it later. So you need two bowls. You need some flour. And I think we're going to need a lot of flour. Four cups of flour. And you'll need lots of salt. So the first thing we're going to do, and this is a nice little math lesson. You know, whenever you're cooking with your kids, you're always doing math with them, which is really, really nice. It helps them later on when they're doing fractions and measuring. So, 
So, okay. So we need one and a half cups of salt. So here's my, my half cup measuring thing. And I'm going to measure out. I need one and a half cups. So, so this is a half. Whoops, you can't see that because my flower's in the way. I need three halves makes one and a half. So this, this adds up to two halves or one whole, one whole. There's one whole cup. And then I need one more half cup of salt. That is a lot of salt. And I think it's because I'm not sure why we put salt in Play-Doh. I have a feeling it has something to do with eating the Play-Doh. All right, so there we go. One and a half cups of salt. And now I'm going to take my one cup measure and I'm going to measure four cups of flour. So this is a good counting lesson, isn't it? So here we go. We're going to go one, one, and two, two. Oh, well, it looks like I need a bigger bowl. Three, and four. Okay. And then, we're going to mix it all up. We're going to mix and mix and mix. And if you have a whisk, that's probably a better way to mix it. You just got to get your hands in there and mix it with your hands. So that's what I'm doing now. So I'm mixing it and I'm mixing it and I'm mixing it. This is fun and it feels really good on my fingers. So I hope if you're helping, you get to see what that feels like. Ooh, okay. So that's pretty good. So now I'll set that aside. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to measure a quarter cup of warm water. So I'm gonna get my, my measuring cup. And I have some warm water here in my pot. It doesn't have to be hot, but this is a little bit hot. So I'm gonna measure one quarter cup of water and I'm going to pour that in a bowl okay and then I'm going to take a half of a tablespoon of oil so this is a tablespoon and I'm just going to whoops I think I forgot to get oh no there's my oil I need some oil I'm just going to fill it about halfway Add in there. Okay. And now I'm going to mix that up a little bit. And now I'm going to add some food coloring. So let's see. Oh, what color Play Doh should I make? I think I'm going to make some. I'll make blue first. So you just add a, it says two to three drops. So one two, three. Oh, I got four. That's okay. And now I'm going to stir that and I have a lovely, lovely blue liquid in there. And then now I'm going to take one cup of the flour and salt. And I'm going to dump that in there and mix it, mix it, mix it. And you can add a little more water if you need it. It's not quite right. And I'm mixing it. Oh my gosh, look at this. Doesn't this look pretty? It's almost a green though. Mine is very green. And you can see, you can get your hands in there and start to Need it like you're baking, you're baking your your donut dough, your your cookie dough, your donut dough. Okay, so I guess uh, the the same. You just keep repeating that same 
mixture. You do the warm water with the oil and a couple drops of food color. And I'll make another color. So this is my this was my blue green, and I it's a little sandy feeling, but I think it'll work just fine. And you can keep it in a plastic bag. You can keep it in the refrigerator when you're not playing with it. And I think what I'll do, I'll just set that there on my board and I'll dump this other stuff out in my sink. And I'll make another batch because I want to make another color. I want to see what, I'm going to do red this time. I think that would be kind of pretty. So I am going to keep making this, all these colors because when my kids come home today, they're going to want to, they're going to want to play with my Play-Doh. They're going to probably want to make some, some donuts.